little bit more aggressive, and so is my set for that manner. Typically on Merlin, you want to launch out a set of abilities and then reset. So I'm kind of looking at the Thor right now. He's a tasty little target. I'm not going to be able to get to him. So I'm going to switch over to my ice stance right here, and then I'm going to throw down my combo right there on the Changa, and I'm going to be able to grab myself that first blood. So what I did... Use your Twitchy channel points this month to vote for the charity of your choice between St. Jude, Habitat for Humanity, and Feeding America. Come out to the stream every day and vote with up to 2,000 points, and the winner at the end of the month will donate $500 to. Hello, everybody. We are here with your Marlin middle guide. We're going to be starting off with tier two restored artifact. This is my go to start on mages right now. The Book of Thoth start and the Warlock Sash start are quite good. They're just a little bit slower, and I've been enjoying the increased pace of the game that comes with grabbing the tier two restored artifact, which leads you right into either a early rod of Tahuti, or you can get your boots and then rod of Tahuti, depending on how the game is going. It gives you a lot of damage output early helps make up for not grabbing a starter item so that way we can grab a starter item later on from one of the actual good ones and not the mage ones so we're going to be starting off actually in our arcane stance and we're going to be using our one our arcane one is going to be a really good source of wave clear for us um and reminder that the blink icon is bugged you do not actually have your blink at level one you do have to actually put a point into it uh, but it has been bugged for quite a while now so you don't actually uh so it looks like it's highlighted in there but it's not actually there our one is going to give us a lot of clear because we're going to use it in those little bonus bops to clear the wave so we throw right out of his archers and then it's just gonna sit there and basically clear the whole thing for us now i can see that thor is already level two which means i'm pretty sure i'm getting early cheese ganked so i'm actually gonna back it up and i'm going to chill either that or they just cleared really really fast i also see the ama is over in the solo lane so i'm gonna throw down my ward over here and look at that there was an early cheese gank coming in the mid lane but now that i know it was about to happen i do not have to get my escape skill on merlin because i've already kind of avoided that cheesy gank that was coming my way if you're afraid of that early gank you can of course get your flicker at level two there is nothing wrong with that to conserve mana i'm not really stand switching all i really need right now is my one in order to clear these waves eventually using my one two if i need that as well trying to save my stand switching for some pvp if i end up needing it i want to conserve my damage now i've got my flicker at level three so i'm feeling confident to play a little bit more aggressive and so is my set for that manner typically on merlin you want to launch out a set of abilities and then reset so i'm kind of looking at the thor right now he's a tasty little target i'm not gonna be able to get to him so i'm gonna switch over to my ice stance right here and then i'm gonna throw down my combo right there on the changa and i'm gonna be able to grab myself that first blood so what I did was I waited for my set of abilities to come up from my arcane stance. I launched my one and my two at the Changa. That forces her to use her Aegis. She didn't have her immunity yet because she wasn't level three. Then I stance switch over to my ice stance, which is going to have enough range for me to get her under tower. And then we grab the kill. So one important thing to note about Merlin is that you have three stances. You have one, which is your arcane, two, which is your fire, and three, which is your ice. You can switch manually to whatever stance you want to, as long as it's not the stance you're in. You can't switch to a stance that you're in. So if I'm in ice stance right now, and I want to switch to say my fire stance, a lot of people, a lot of newer players to Merlin think that you have to just um, go through them in a cycled order. So a lot of people think you basically have to go one, two, three, one, two, three. But if you ulti for your stand switch and then you click numbers one, two, or three, it's gonna switch you to that stance. 
So normally if I just press my ultimate, it would naturally shift me right over to my arcane stance. But if I press ult E2 while I'm in the air, it's gonna shift me right over to my fire stance. So the next time that I shifted, if I just clicked my ultimate, it would shift me over to I stance. So if I wanted to shift backwards into arcane, I would have to hit our ulti and then one. So those are assigned the numbers one, two, and three for arcane, fire, and ice respectively. For our level order on Merlin, we are going to be getting ourselves our one max out first. This is going to allow us for really good poke with our ice one. It's also going to allow us really good clear in both our fire and our arcane stances for the wave. So I'm going to switch over to my arcane stance because I'm just trying to go for the clear. Throw it right out the wave in the middle, and you're going to see that it's going to full clear the entire thing. I've also got my full rod of Tahuti online now. I felt confident with my first blood. I get the rod of Tahuti. Like I said, you do not have to get the rod of Tahuti first. You can back and get your beads, or excuse me, your beads, your boots, and then finish the rod of Tahuti second, but you get so much damage out of this sub five minute rod of Tahuti. It is crazy. So I do recommend trying to get it if you can. So we're gonna level up our ulti whenever we can on Merlin. This is gonna lower the cooldown of our stance switch. Plus it's gonna give us those effects around us. Reminder that you do have to have a point into the uh, Merlin ultimate in order to actually get these effects. So you can stance switch without needing a point in your ultimate, but you don't get any of these bonus effects. Those bonus effects are like slowing from the ice around you, the damage from the fire, the knockup from the arcane, all that stuff you do not get unless you put uh, the point into it. So you do want to rank those up because it's very effective and more importantly it lowers the cooldown of your actual ultimate. After the ultimate you want to rank up your one for the PvP damage as well as the clear. Then you're going to rank up your two to max and finally your three for the flicker cooldown. Now one more thing you should know about Merlin is that his passive is basically a very small polynomican proc. So kind of like how um Kind of like how Hanmatch's passive is like a small Hydra's proc. Merlin's passive is like a small poly proc. Basically, exactly how you think poly works, that is exactly how uh, the passive for Merlin works as well. So when I use an ability, I'm going to have a couple of seconds here with overload on me. And my next autos are going to be empowered. You can have this stacked up to three times through your abilities. It'll stack up. And then when you use your next auto, it will do bonus damage. Now, if you whiff on this, right? So if I throw out an ability and then I try to follow up with that auto and I whiff, too bad, so sad, you have used your charge. Now, a lot of people don't like this Merlin passive, I think it is a lot better than people give it credit for. So I'm getting ganked right here, so I'm gonna try to run away. I'm gonna flicker myself over this way. I'm not gonna stand switch yet because I need to keep it up to use it as my peel. So now I'm gonna stand switch in my one. I'm gonna pop my beads in my one and my two right on top of myself. At this point, I'm gonna die, but we should be able to get a return kill off of this. So I stand switched from my ice into my arcane because that is going to slow everybody around me. Plus it also knocked them up, which gave my team an opportunity to get there and grab those return kills. Now I am going to grab Shoes of the Magi here and a couple of wards. And I'm also gonna get myself a little health pot for the sustain. I've got a bunch of MP5 already because of the full rod of Tahuti. So with our passive, this is going to scale off of our magical power. It is also going to proc on basically anything that we throw it at. So as we get later and later into the game, it is going to get better and better, which is why we are going to be stacking it with a couple of other fun items this game. So I'm going to be getting a Boomba's Hammer a little bit later into this build. Boomba's Hammer just basically the go-to mid lane starter item right now, uh, but you don't get it at the very start of the game. You typically get it as your fourth, fifth item. Uh, Sundering Axe has also been an item that people are buying, but it is getting nerfed very heavily in the next patch for mid laners specifically. 
Um, they are changing it so that it's going to scale off of your protections. So that way it's still really good for solo laners, but it is no longer going to be good for mid mages, which means your options basically went from either Sundering Axe or Boomba's Hammer in the middle lane to mostly just getting that Boomba's Hammer. Now, Boomba's Hammer is fun though on Merlin because when you use an ability, for the Boombas, your next auto attack does some bonus damage. Well, that means that our bonus damage from our Boombas is going to be proccing with the bonus damage from our passive. Enemies have returned and if we get a poly Navicon on top of that, we're going to get a poly proc on top of our passive proc on top of a Boombas proc. So you can get a lot of damage out if you have room in the build for poly. Now, not every build is going to have room for the poly, and that's all right. Good use right there of Changa 2 to avoid my pull. You can see that I am trying to I use these long range, um, these long oh, range uh, abilities onto the Changa. I'm not trying to walk up and use my fire stance on her. That's because for the most part, your ice stance and your arcane stance are gonna be the ones that you use the most. Arcane as a form of wave clear, ice for the long range PvP. Fire is really more so when you are trying to burn an objective. When you're trying to do the gold theory, the fire giant, the pyro, it is extremely good at burning through objectives. But when you're PvPing, it's easy to get interrupted out of the cast times. It's easy for people to move out of the two uh, fire stances ability range. So standardly, you're using the ice and the arcane for PvP. Um, and then the fire comes really, really in handy for a burning of the PVE. So I'm gonna go ahead back up. Normally I would be getting a Spear of Desolation right here, but this game they've got a Changa in the mid lane, they've got AMA solo, they've got RDO support. They've got a lot of team slash self sustain. So I'm gonna be getting myself a Divine Ruin and then grabbing myself that Spear of Desolation fourth. That's gonna be fine. We're gonna double up on the flat pen. And then we'll be able to get that fifth item. Boomba still, no big deal. We just got to make sure that we get that anti-heal online. Healing still extremely strong in Smite. If you do not get anti-heal, you're going to regret it. So I'm actually going to dash into Chonga, see if I can't force him to use his one. He hasn't used it yet. There it is. Now I'm going to switch over to my Arcane Stance, throw my one and my two at him, and that should be able to wrap up that kill. I'm going to have to beads right here for the Thor and start running away through my team in order to get away from him. So right there, I was trying to bait out the Changa's two so that that way I could switch stances and then follow up on her with the kill. AMA is heading my way, so I'm going to continue to run away. And I've almost got enough gold for my Divine Ruin. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab these back camps and then head back over and get my Divine and I need to get these wards placed down as well. For my second act of this game, you actually have two options on Merlin, Aegis and Blink. Both are very good. This game, we're a little bit ahead right now, so I'm gonna go Blink as the more aggressive active. The reason why Blink actually works on Merlin is because you can Blink ulti and get your big aoe ulti proc off on people knock them up or slow them or bleed them and get a bunch of damage and cc off and then you still have your flicker to get out it's kind of like the equivalent of flashbang on raw except for way way more efficient it's extremely strong in the team fights. Now, I don't recommend it if you are behind or even. If you're behind or even, just go ahead and grab that Aegis like you normally would. Now, Thor is ulting right now, so I imagine he's going to try to go down for me. So if he does try to land on me, I'm just going to flicker. But I see that he has turned around, and I'm going to be okay. I've got the Divine Ruin now for the anti-heal. I'm going to throw down some wards on the right-hand side. And now I'm going to continue to go for a poke on this Chang'a. Every time he's running anywhere near me, I'm going to try to hit him with a couple abilities. He stance switch. Uh, he uses his two. So I'm actually going to stance switch. I'm going to throw down a little two here in between us. Give myself a little bit of leeway room because I see the RDO coming over for me. And now this fight probably will not continue. 
So for our standard ability combination on Merlin, it's going to depend on the stance that we're in. In our ice stance, you typically want to go two and then one. The reason you want to go two and then one in ice stance is because your two gains bonus damage. Uh, excuse me, your one is going to gain bonus damage if the target is already um, slowed. So your two is going to go slow the target, and then you're going to hit them with the one, and it's going to do that 15% bonus damage, which is why you typically want to do the one and then the two. So I'm going to hit this hand here with the two, then I'm going to follow up with the one, I'm going to flicker right into it, I'm going to switch over to my ice stance, so that way it does the bleed damage, and we're going to be able to grab the kill. Enemy missing. In Ike Stance, you typically want to go 2-1 um, as well for maximum damage. That is because your 2 is going to get you um, Armor Shred on the target that you're fighting inside of it. This is really more of a PvE ability because players can leave this ability extremely fast. But uh, in the next patch, he actually is getting buffed up so that this applies faster on players. So it's actually going to be easier to get the Armor Shred on players with your Fire Stance uh, here in the next patch what is it 8.4 i do believe and then you follow up with your one which is a channeled ability your one and your two and your fire stands do a lot of damage but they are uh your fire stance one is interruptible which means that if you're around somebody like an rdo right she can just stun me and interrupt my one and i could get absolutely no damage off then she can just walk out of the two and now i've used two whole abilities and i got no pvp damage off that's why you mostly use it for pve in our arcane stance um using the one and then the two and then the two and the one are actually both viable it just depends on the situation um I hear a Thor ulting me from that left-hand side jungle, so I'm just going to go ahead and chill out back here. If he throws his hammer, he does. I'm going to throw that one-two combo on him. Not quite going to reach. That's okay. I'm going to flicker in, switch over to my fire stance so I get that bleed damage, and then I'm going to start backing up. My flicker is down, so I do need to be a little bit careful. Audio cues and smite or of course, very, very important. So on the arcane stance... Though it depends if you're trying to get more damage or more CC off, what is more important for you to guarantee? If you go for the 2-1, that traditionally means that you're trying to hit the pull more so than anything. So when you throw out the 2-1, You'll watch that this has a small delay on it. So if I throw my 2 and then the 1, right about the time that that 2 is hitting, my one is going to reach there, so that is standardly how you are going to do it. But if somebody is very low in HP and you're just trying to get maximum long range damage off, sometimes somebody jumps over a wall, right, and they're super low, then you want to throw out the one and then the two because you're more concerned about getting that quick burst off than you necessarily are getting... Um, the CC maximization. So right there, we start up the Gold Fury. I'm in my Arcane Stance, so I throw down my Arcane Abilities. Then I switch over in range near the Gold Fury to make sure the Gold Fury gets hit by my passive. And then I switch over into Fire Stance because Fire is much better for burning those PvE objectives. Gonna grab myself another ward here, and I'm gonna make sure I switch out into my Arcane Stance to have it ready for the next battle. Arcane stance is also going to be the best stance for defending and assaulting uh, phoenixes because it's this very That's large uh, ticking over time AOE when you're trying to defend a phoenix. It is very annoying for the enemy team trying to shove into you. And when you're attacking a phoenix, it does provide a very good uh, zoning technique. So you're often going to see arcane used a lot around the, the phoenixes in the tower fights. Ice is just very good overall. It's decent against objectives. It's decent against players and it has long range. And then fire is really special as specialized into close range combat as well as those objectives. So I'm gonna throw out an ability. I'm just gonna try to auto attack that tower because I'm gonna get a bunch of extra damage on it from the passive. And we're gonna be able to take that tower down. I know there's a Thor over to the left hand side because I saw his hammer come out. So I'm gonna try to run back just a little bit, staying in range of my Ymir, just in case he does end up needing help. For the gods that we do not like to go against on Merlin, Merlin really hates cripples. So sometimes people don't think about it on Merlin because your flicker is a instant uh, cast ability, but you can't use flicker when you're crippled so gods like ardio and gods like 
Aries are an absolute nightmare. So I have to flicker early here because I see that the RDO is coming for me. I'm going to switch over into my Ice Dance pretty close to her so she gets slowed and knock up. And then I'm going to follow up with my 2-1 combo make sure I get my bonus damage on my 1 because she is definitely slowed. So if you're in that cripple range, you cannot use your flicker. And if you cannot use your flicker on Merlin, you are a sitting duck. Merlin seems pretty squirrely, even though he doesn't have a super long range getaway skill because of how strong instant cast getaway skills are in Smite. So even though it doesn't take me very far, just the ability to be able to do that is such a good getaway skill. But if you're crippled, you cannot use it. So it really, really screws with Merlin. Merlin doesn't care about walls because his flicker will get him over walls. So Ymir, Thor, Odin, whatever, doesn't matter. Not a big deal for us. We can flicker right over that wall. Although it can be annoying if we know that somebody is specifically not using their wall ability. This is how you counter people with short range jumps slash leap slash in Merlin's case, an instant teleport. Sometimes not using your wall is better than using it. So if I was going up against an Odin and Odin was running right at my face the entire game and just hitting me with his bird bomb and hitting me with his three and the slow and the sun and never using his ultimate. If he's never using his ultimate, then I can never use my flicker because I have to keep my flicker up for his ultimate. So sometimes not using those walls on gods like that can actually be more beneficial and be more annoying for those characters so just keep that in mind if you are trying to counter somebody like a merlin sometimes just knowing the threat of the ability is out there can stop you from using abilities so i'm gonna wait for my arcane stance one to come back up once my arcane stance one comes back up and i throw my one my two i'm gonna switch over to my fire stance land an auto attack land another auto attack hit my two one and we're gonna burn down this pyromancer instantly I make sure to hit it with my full one two combo in both my stances and it goes down now that we've gotten to our fifth item slot i'm almost level 20 so i want to make sure that i can instantly upgrade my boombas to a boombas hammer when i get to that point I'm gonna switch back over to my arcane stance while we are just chilling and nothing is happening i'm gonna attack call to fury. attack the gold fury because the gold back. fury is spawning in just a moment and that'll probably also get me uh, right up to that level 20 line as well. Gonna throw out a deep sentry just so we've got some vision to see if they're coming towards the gold. Enemy missing. So your job on Merlin is basically just to kill whatever is in front of you. Pretty much everybody is going uh, to be squishy to you, especially once we get this Boomas online. Keep in mind that Boomas Hammer comes with 10% pen. And Rod of Tahuti also has 10% pen. Andrew's gonna jump this way, so I'm actually gonna throw out my 1 2 combo where he is gonna land, and we force his beads right there. That is fantastic. And now we can head back towards the goal. So I'm gonna have 20% pen, plus I'm gonna have that 20 flat pen from the Divine and the uh, Spear of Desolation. If I didn't need the Divine, I probably would have gotten myself a Soul Gem for a little bit of extra sustain and the CDR, which would cap me at 40% um with my boomba's hammer because i don't have a solo gem this game it means that the red pot will actually cap me out at that 40 percent now it doesn't really look like they want to give up this gold fury for free i'm gonna throw down my two and then my one over in the changa forces her to use her avoidance i need to be a little bit careful because i know they've got people all over i see thor on the map coming from the mid lane so he's probably gonna try to gank me soon I'm going to switch over to my ice dance so I can throw down a little defensive ice 2-1 combo. Keeping my eye on the minimap to see where people are. And I'm going to use my blink to try to get me away from this RDO. Right now, just kind of trying not to die. Hit the Anher with the 2-1 combo. That'll be able to grab the kill on him. Now I can be more aggressive, so I'm going to dash in on the RDO. Switch to my fire stance to get that bonus fire damage off call back for the gold fury so we can hopefully get our ymir to reset back here and tank this for us doesn't look like he's really going to so me and anna actually have to be a little bit careful here but we should be able to burn it without him regardless now that i'm level 20 i can back up get that boomba's hammer in this game i can get myself a polynomicon to help with some of our tower pushing capabilities and also give me a little bit more burst damage on my autos and a little bit of an extra incentive to actually utilize those boomba's hammer autos to lower our cooldowns 
Now, instead of the Polynomicon here, a Solo Gen would still be a good item. A Ob Shard, if I needed more pen, would bring me up to 40% pen, would also be a great item here. And you, of course, you can always get away with one defensive item on your mages, uh, typically the go-to being something like a Mantle of Discord. Nothing ever wrong with that, especially if you're getting priority targeted and you feel like you're always dying first in the team fights. Better for you to live longer and get more abilities off than die at the very start and only get like one round of burst abilities for most gods over by the fire giant just me and the emir but that's gonna be okay gonna switch over to my fire stance and we're gonna be able to get this thing down to half hp with just the two of us now changa is over here and i've already used all my abilities so i need to be a little bit careful now merlin is not a very good objective securer I'm going to use my 2-1 again and hope that this is enough with the Amir ult to get it. It is going to be enough. I'm going to switch over to my Ice Stance to slow this guy down. Have to kind of just sit back here trying to auto attack in between my abilities in order to lower my cooldowns and get that heal off. And that's going to give me my stance switch back up over and over and over and over again. Boomba's Hammer, lowering your stance switch means you just keep on switching back and forth, which means you've always got our abilities up, which is fantastic. Now we can run it right on down the mid lane, That's grab this line. last tier two tower that is on the map and probably get a Phoenix here as well. Got to start throwing out just a little bit of ability because I've got the Boombas. I want to get those extra, uh, the extra damage from my passive. And I don't really need to be concerned about my cooldown because of the Boombas. So I can actually use abilities more aggressively like this just to get that bonus damage proc. Your team has destroyed a middle enemy phoenix. I've got a feeling they're going to rotate right through here. So I'm going to throw my 2-1 through the wall. Try to get some damage on them. It actually forces the Changa to use her too. They were trying to rotate that way. Now we don't have any creeps. So we do need to be a little bit careful. There's an Ardeo that has actually come out the door behind us. I still see Thor kind of through this wall. So I'm going to throw another little combo. Get some damage off right there. And this is where the Thor, or the... Merlin Arcane Stamp really becomes super extra annoying because you kind of just keep spamming abilities over and over and over again. Gonna go ahead and beat and try to flicker myself out of this one, throw down that too. So if they try to come for me, they're gonna get pulled away and continue to use my auto attack in between my abilities just to get my cooldowns back up. Now my blink is about to come up. Unfortunately, I do get put in combat by um, that Phoenix. Switch back over to my Arcane Stamp, which is gonna knock him up provide a little bit more CC, and now we should be able to attack the Titan and grab this last kill. Gonna throw out a little two in the base, which is gonna pull the Thor just a little bit outside of that fountain. Not gonna be enough to get us a kill. I am gonna use my uh, flicker here aggressively to use the Boomba's hammer proc so I can get to my fire stance and burn down the Titan with my fire stance. Like I said, for my last item there, that would have been a Polynomicon to have the additional damage on my autos. So that way my passive was proccing it, my Boombas was proccing it, and my Poly was proccing it. Helps Merlin be a crazy good Phoenix um, Shredder and Tower Shredder, especially if you're having problems with that. But of course we did have other options in our kit that we could have used like an obsidian shard like a soul gem uh, like a defensive item just to keep us alive if we were feeling like we needed a gust and that is our merlin a mid lane gun thank you for supporting the twitchiest community if you'd like to see more videos make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos thank you for all your support and have a twitching day y'all